Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Sussex Armoury Jackal Parabellum and the Jackal Woodstock. Okay, so the reason I cut the video there was so that I could change the stock. Now, if you saw my last video on the Sussex Armoury, you'll know that the Jackal Woodstock and Jackal Parabella are essentially the same gun. Uh, it's the same action, just with different stock on it. And if you're interested in this gun, I'd also recommend that you watch that video. Now, as you know, I like to give a bit of information about the uh, gun and the manufacturer, but in this case, that's all in the other video. It's almost like a two-parter. So I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and whilst there is a lot of crossover, I'm not just going to repeat myself now. So the Sussex Armoury Jackal Woodstock and Jackal Parabellum, made by Sussex Armoury of England in the late 70s, early 80s. I think 77 to 80, 81. Let's take a closer look. Here you can see it in its parabellum guys again. I'm going to first talk a bit about this stock and then change it over to the wood stock for the majority of the video. And I'm going to do that for three reasons. Uh, despite the parabellum being more iconic Sussex Armoury gun, I originally bought it with the wooden stock. Um, I shot it with the parabellum stock in the Sussex Armoury video. And lastly, I just prefer the wood stock. So the parabellum, it's clearly characterised by its military style stock which the Sussex Armoury were best known for. Uh, it closely resembles an assault rifle. It's got a definite kind of M16 AR-15 look about it. Now, the stock is made of black ABS plastic, which has some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, despite being plastic, it does feel quite sturdy, and it's pretty light, but not too light. It weighs about seven and a half pounds. And the combination of the pistol grip and the chunky forend make it really comfortable to hold. Um, however, the Jackal isn't the quietest gun ever, and the fact that this is largely hollow plastic just amplifies that and makes it louder. And no matter how sturdy it feels, for me, plastic is still plastic. Now, whilst I do like some military-style guns, in terms of traditional long wooden stocks and things, uh, especially like the old military training rifles, I don't really like this. Now, I don't know if it's even the military aspect, it just feels like it's trying to be something it's not. Uh, the stock looks more like it should be on an airsoft gun or a toy. Now, the stock is complete with a dummy magazine. Now, these were sold as optional extras uh, and it can be removed, it's just held in with a couple of screws inside. And whilst I think their primary purpose is to add to the look of the gun, they did have a function. Um, they could be filled with pellets for uh, pellet storage and then underneath you have this little sliding tray to release the pellets. Um, when I bought this stock, as with most of the ones that are around now, I had a few bits missing and there aren't a lot of spares for these guns around so I actually had to uh, make a couple of replacement parts myself and these bits included the butt pad um, the rear sling swivel and the uh, barrel band which keeps this top uh, cover in place and that also doubles up as a front sling swivel. Now they aren't perfect uh, but they're as close to the originals as I could make with what I had to hand um, but they look okay and they work quite well which is the main thing. I'm now going to take the parabellum stock off and put the wood stock on. So to do that, I first need to remove the rear sight. I then have to undo these little nuts on the side of the barrel band. Which then allows me to remove the top cover. And I can then just 
just remove the two main retaining screws. So there you have the beating part of the Jackal. Now as I've already said, this is the uh, exact same gun in both the Parabellum and the Woodstock. And without the stock on, you wouldn't actually know what gun this came from. And you can see at the rear of the compression chamber here, there's two different screw holes. Uh, this vertical one is for the Woodstock and this angled one is for the Parabellum stock. Um, I have here a copy of an old Sussex Armoury advert which shows the gun at the top here and a Jackal Parabellum air rifle and also advertising the Woodstock version and I also have an old parts diagram which again has all the details of this gun with the two different stock variations. Now before I put the wooden stock on, I just wanted to take the opportunity to show you a couple of the markings in more detail. On the top of the compression chamber here, you've got the Jackal logo. And on the side of the barrel, you've got Sussex Armoury, Hailsham, England. And then on the side here, which would normally be covered by the rear sight, is the serial number. As you can see, my rifle has a very low serial number of 00086. Uh, I'm now going to put the wood stock on, which is slightly more straightforward than the Parabellum one. Simply place the action back into the stock. Replace the rear chain screw. Now the front screw is actually a slightly different one, it's a shorter one for this stock. So I can put that back in. And then lastly, replace the rear sight. Is now the Jackal Woodstock, and despite it being basically the same gun as the Parabellum, it's amazing how different it looks. Now it's got a beach stock, which is right handed, as it's got this slightly raised cheek piece on the left hand side, and then it's just got a uh, fitted rubber butt pad in the end. And this stock is in quite good condition for the age. Now, most spring piston rifles are either brake barrel or under lever. But as this one is a side lever, it means there's no cutout in the bottom of the stock for the cocking lever to go, um, which I really like. It makes it feel very solid, almost like a PCP stock. Now, the wooden stock does add a bit of weight to the gun. Uh, the wood stock weighs in at eight pounds, which is half a pound heavier than the Parabellum's ABS stock. Now, as I've already mentioned, uh, this gun is a side lever. So it's a spring piston gun. Uh, cocking lever is on the right hand side, which isn't entirely convenient. Um, 
So for a brake barrel or under lever gun, I'd keep my right hand on the grip and then use my left hand to cock the gun. Uh, so for this, you do actually have to change hands to cock it. Now, as well as inconvenient to cock, it's also not entirely comfortable to cock. You can see the end of the uh, cocking arm there is not exactly very smooth and comfortable looking. Uh, and it does start to hurt your hand after a while. Now, if you know much about the Sussex Armoury, or you've seen my previous video on the Sussex Armoury, you know that when they went out of business in the early 80s, Air Arms started making the jackals under their own name. And um, one of the things they improved on the guns was to add a plastic cover to the end of the cocking lever to make it more comfortable. Um, lever is held closed by this little push button, but it doesn't keep it that securely closed. I mean, it's not too big a problem, as it's not exactly going to fly open, but that's actually another bit that the uh, air arms improved on these guns. They replaced the push button with a sliding catch. Now, whilst it does seem that I'm having a bit of a moan about the side lever, uh, it also makes the gun quite wide, which can cause a few problems when you're storing it next to other guns in the gun safe. But despite my moans, there are some good things about the side lever. I've already said it makes the stock feel um, very sturdy, very solid without having that cut out in the bottom. Um, and as well as that, if you're shooting in the prone position, it's easier to cock as you don't have to keep lifting the whole gun up to cock it as you would with a brake barrel or an under lever. This gun doesn't have a safety, but the side lever has a ratchet on it which acts as a kind of a safety as it can't be fired during the cocking cycle. And I can demonstrate that by half cocking the gun. You see there that the cocking lever stays where it is unless I clip it back in. So even though it's half cocked and I pull the trigger it doesn't fire and that's because the sear isn't engaged yet. Now I'm just going to quickly finish cocking it, put a pellet in and fire it so that I'm not leaving it half cocked. Okay, it's safe again now. Now the metal parts are all blued steel and most of those are made by NSP Engineering which a lot of you will be aware now make the parts for air arms guns and it has an 18 inch rifle barrel made by Sig Hamily in Switzerland. Now, it has a single stage trigger. Uh, it's not the best or worst trigger I've ever come across. Now it is made of plastic, which I'm not a massive fan of, uh, but it is adjustable for pull weight. Now this particular gun is in 2.2 calibre. Um, they did also make a 177 version, but I found the 2.2 version to be the most common. Now turning to look at the sights. It's got a dovetail scope rail on it. Now the rear open sight is quite large and feels quite cheap and plasticky but it's not actually too bad to use and it's adjustable for windage and elevation you can see the dials on either side there um, now this is the standard front sight now I think that actually looks quite a lot like a jackal's head now I don't know if that's just coincidence or not um, and as I say that is the uh, standard front sight which is removable it's just held on with a um, grub screw. Now I do also have another front sight for this gun which is a better quality metal sight. Now whilst it's clearly made for this gun it's the same um, height and the same barrel diameter I've never actually seen a jackal with one of these on before. However I have here a copy of Airgun World magazine from November 1983 which features a review on the air arms made um, Woodsman, which was uh, previously marketed as the Jackal Woodsman under Sussex Armoury. And reading this, I did actually see the front sight on this gun, I think is actually that. So I think that this better quality metal sight is actually a later air arms version. Now, as you can see, the uh, sights look quite high 
for open sights but they do actually feel um, fine when you've got your cheek down on the stock and I suppose they're no higher than they would be looking through a scope. I'm now going to test the accuracy with the open sights. I'm going to fire 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a range of around 12 and a half meters and to do that I'll be using these BSA Pylarm number no. 2 pellets. Now these pellets don't have a stated weight but I've weighed a selection of them and they average at 14.3 grains. So here I have my target. Now I know I said I was going to fire 10 pellets, but I actually fired, I think it was 13 pellets in the end in order to just get 10 on the target. Now there's a bit of a grouping going on here, but there's lots of strays, especially considering there are at least three pellets that missed the target altogether. Now I know I'm not the best shot in the world, but I expect to get better accuracy than that. Although this obviously isn't 100% true reflection of the accuracy, as I'm sure I would have had better results with a scope mounted. I'm now going to test the power by running it over my chronograph and for that I'll again be using these BSA Pylarm No. 2 pellets. So here I have my test sheet. Now I've already done all the calculations and everything. Um, my 10 shots averaged at 452.88 feet per second with a spread of 17.2 feet per second and that equates to a power of 6.51 foot pounds using these 14.3 grain pellets. Um, when these rifles were new they were supposed to get up to 580 feet per second so my rifle is obviously running a little tired. So I do have a new mainspring to put in it, which is a Titan XS number one mainspring. Uh, I just haven't got around to replacing it yet. So there you've seen the Sussex Armoury Jackal Woodstock and Jackal Parabellum. Now, as you saw, my rifle isn't the most accurate or powerful air gun you'll ever come across, but I'm pretty sure if I stripped it down, cleaned it, re-lubed it, uh, replace the mainspring and mount a scope, I could really improve its performance and I may even be able to nurse it back to health enough that it could be hunted with, I'm not sure. Um, the Jackal rifles are becoming quite collectible and sought after uh, but they are still relatively affordable, you can pick one up uh, anywhere between about £100 and £250 depending on condition, accessories, calibre etc. And I think one of the reasons they're still quite popular is that, rightly or wrongly, there aren't many military-styled air guns around, uh, with exceptions such as uh, the old military training rifles, um, the Hamily 420, which the Parabellum closely resembles, and a couple of new guns made by companies like Crossman, you're largely limited to airsoft guns. Now, I'd like to say thank you to Mike Clayton from the Jackal's Lair uh, for his help and letting me use some of his resources. He runs an excellent website dedicated to the Jackal Rifles, and I'd encourage you all to have a look at it at www.jackals-lair.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And also be sure to check out the Air Armoury's sister video on the Sussex Armoury itself, and as I've said, I'll put a link to that in the description below. So, thanks for watching. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.